Hello, my name is Alex Nugent. I am the inventor of AHA Computing, which is a theory that enables us to construct large-scale adaptive learning systems at power and space efficiencies far exceeding what has traditionally been possible. But all of my research over the last 10 years has been predicated on the availability of a very special type of electronic device, a device that works a bit like a synapse in a brain. And while many people over the last 50 years have recognized the need for such a device, until now, it hasn't truly been available. That's why I am extremely excited to introduce to you my new development partner, Dr. Chris Campbell. I'm Chris Campbell. I'm an associate professor at Boise State University, and my research focuses on a device we call the Memristor. The Memristor is a device that basically changes a property, and that property is called resistance. Resistance is the ability of a material to allow electron current flow. The great thing about a Memristor is you can change this resistance and keep it in that state, change it again to another state, change it to another state, put it back to the original state. And if you think about it, you can actually imagine so many applications for a device where you can utilize this change in resistance. Our computers have advanced tremendously over the last 40 years, taking the same basic idea and just making it smaller and faster and smaller and faster. But our technology is plateauing. So whenever we hit up against a barrier, as we are now, we kind of naturally wonder, well, what can we do differently? The wall that we're coming up against with the current technology is one where we use memory bits that are either a zero state or a one state. They're one thing or the other. And we're trying to get as many memory bits into as small of an area as possible. And we're reaching the fundamental physical limitations of being able to put them in a smaller and smaller size at higher and higher density. We just can't go any further. So how do you get around something like that? One way is to think outside of zero and one. Maybe memory is the resistance value. What if you can make a resistor that's continuously variable? We've got this new device that can be a new memory with all these states available. Let's use it differently. And that's where people like Alex are going, thinking of completely different platforms and different ideas. A memristor adapts as energy flows through it. It gives you a new type of intrinsically adaptive hardware. So what we need to do is take this device and put it into our electronic systems and create new computers that adapt as they're used. The easiest way to integrate memristors with an existing integrated circuit technology is to apply it in the processing at the very end. So we call this back end of line. Front end of line is all the CMOS. Back end of line is applying exotic materials or different processes for a specific application. So what we do is we deposit these memories of materials, maybe taking four or five processing steps in terms of layers, etch them, and at the end, you've got your memories of devices on the top of your integrated circuit, and everything works beautifully. The ability to put memristors on top of CMOS actually opens up an amazing number of possibilities because you get to take advantage of an existing process that works very well. Then you can add that next layer, that next step. It integrates perfectly into how we currently do things. I've been working on these memristive devices at Boise State for almost 10 years. So we've learned so much about the materials and how they respond and how you can change them to get them to behave certain ways that you can quickly make your test structure, put the material on it and see how it works. Does it work like you thought it would? I actually love seeing an application for the technology. So being able to work with someone that has a vision, that has something great that they're going to be doing with the device is fantastic. It's such a motivator. You know, you want to make the best possible device you can imagine because you want to see it take off and be used like this. It's one thing 
to be curious and to wonder about what you can do. And it's an entirely different thing to hold it in your hand and probe it and test it and burn it out and get another one and fiddle and tinker. You need that process in order to make technology. That's the process of learning. That's how we innovate. You know, I think that the next thing would be to really make devices accessible to everyone. They're really there, and that's really what you want. This is an amazing time. It's an amazing time to be curious, because at no other point have we had access to the tools that we have access to now. So stay tuned. I'll let you know what's next.